I'm sorry. Just really um, surreal that I, that we're doing this right now. Two mothers reported missing in the same region on the same day. But where one woman's family now has some answers, the other has none. She just kind of up and disappeared. Sherry Papini's roadside abduction and sudden return weeks later made national headlines, a case one Northern California family believes may have overshadowed their own loss. But now... Do you think there's foul play involved with her disappearance? Crime Watch Daily is on the case. Both dogs came around and detected something, probably blood. We're retracing mother of four Stacy Smart's final steps before oblivion, a search for answers to a mystery unsolved. If a person wanted to dispose of, of a body, there are a lot of opportunities. These days, when the Smart family gathers around the dinner table, there's no such thing as small talk. <laughs> what was she like as an older sister? She was free. She was nurturing. She would take care of you. She took care of everybody. We called her sometimes Stacy Stacy because she was just kind of flighty and, and, and fun, you know, just wanting to have fun. And, and you'd be driving down the road with her and she'd have you stop and jump out and pick flowers on the side of the road. And, and just a real free spirit. But no matter what whims she might be chasing, the Weaverville, California native always made time for her family. How often did you and your mom talk? My mom and I um, spoke at least twice a week, if not more. Take me through the last time that you saw her. She stopped by my house. She seemed very happy, and we were making plans to get together for Halloween. But Nicole says in the weeks leading up to Halloween, her grandma, Stacy's mom, tried calling Stacy several times, and not only was there no answer. The home phone was disconnected. Um, my grandmother was concerned at that point. It had been throughout a couple weeks um, before Halloween, and um, I figured she would be stopping by soon or call soon to get together for Halloween. When Halloween came and went, with still no word from Stacy, the family took action. We went to the house, nobody was there, we left a note, please contact us, it's an emergency, it's important. And no call from her. But there was one person Stacy's family hoped might know more, should know more. She was living with her boyfriend, Tony Brand, at that time. She moved in in the beginning of the spring. She was with him for about six months. He was a local home care worker slash karaoke DJ. And in Tony, Stacy seemed to have found her other half. They both were very happy. And she was telling me how awesome they were together. They, that she was happy and they were doing, she was doing really good. That is until she wasn't. A month before she had gone missing, she did uh, call my grandmother and she was crying on the phone and said that Tony had been cheating on her. The two reportedly patched things up, but roughly a month after that tearful call, Stacy was gone, and no one could seem to find Tony either. So at this point, the couple is just missing. Your mom's gone, boyfriend's gone. What are you thinking? Um, I just became very concerned. Started asking around, anybody seen her? Did anyone know where she is? And nobody's seen her for two weeks. Not since October 15th, to be exact. And a neighbor witnessed something. The neighbors, they went to a birthday party at their neighbor's house. And after this party, one of the neighbors had seen Tony and Stacy fighting. So from there, I decided to file a missing persons report. The date was November 2nd, the same day Sherry Papini disappeared less than an hour away. She had daughters there, grandchildren, friends and acquaintances that she'd known for years. Like she has all these connections to the community that she's made no attempt to contact any of them. Yeah, she just literally vanished. Yes. Stacy's family tells police what little they know, then begin their own investigation, hiring a private detective and doing everything they can to track down that other missing person. At what point since the time you filed the missing persons report did you get a hold of Tony Brand? It was about a week later. 
and it was already um, the 8th of November. He was there. He was really, he was polite. He invited us in. He didn't say very much. But what he did say didn't sit right with Stacy's family. When you would ask, where's my sister? I don't know. How do you not know? How do you wake up one day and just not know where your live-in girlfriend is? And he's like, I don't know, she left. Stacy's sister wasn't buying it. I made a few phone calls to people that have contact with Tony and Stacy on a daily basis. And when they told me that Tony had told him that Stacy had moved out two weeks prior. So then I called one more person that had a daily contact with them. And he said that Tony had told him that my sister had gotten violent and he had to make her move. And when Stacy's daughter and son-in-law asked Tony about it, the story seemed to change once again. Tony had said that she left several notes and that she was nearby and she had been back to his house several times. I asked him if I could see the notes. He said he didn't know where the notes were. Did he express any type of emotion? No, just uh, she's been in and out of my house and she must be okay, she must be close by. So he's saying he's seen her from time to time since? Well, he said that she'd been in and out, but he wasn't there. Growing more suspicious by the second, Stacy's family asked to have a look around the house. And her stuff was all there. Yes. I made it down the hall and into their bedroom. And the carpet was missing, an oval that was like cut out. And that was odd to me. I took pictures with my phone. We went out there with a team of forensic scientists to search the house. I saw the patchwork rug carpet that they were talking about, but that's also been there for a significant amount of time, according to our sources, who personally knew Stacy and Tony, and they had been talking about doing that together and coming up with kind of a, a collage of carpet, if you will, in that house. So that wasn't anything that I particularly found uh, peculiar. But as the last known person to see Stacy, police did bring Tony in for questioning. What was the story that he gave to you? Um, he said during their relationship at one particular point she had left, didn't give him any information that she was leaving. He started seeing another woman. Then she came back and they rekindled their relationship. He figured that's what happened to her again. That's why he didn't think it was too terribly suspicious because she had done it to him in the past. And did you believe that? Did you find that a valid story? I find it an interesting story. Uh, whether or not I, I believe it, I don't really think it's appropriate to comment on. But Stacy's family wasn't holding back. So no one buys the she took off and left me story. I don't believe she would ever put her family through that. And to Stacy's loved ones, the story seemed even more unlikely when authorities learned that the last time Stacy's bank card was used was October 16th, the day after she was reportedly seen at that party with Tony. In the beginning of the, the investigation, he was asked to take a lie detector test. He refused and I said, if I need to, I will take one, but I need to have a lawyer. And I pressured him on social media. I said, Tony Brand, I will pay for a lawyer for you to take the test. I'll raise up the funds, get a lawyer so you can take the test. And that worked, the pressure? He, he agreed to take a test. He set up a time and date to take it. But when that time came. Tony Brand never showed up for the test. Stacy's family believes Tony Brand, the boyfriend she was living with at the time, may know more and convince him to take a polygraph test. But after initially saying yes, Tony never showed. Did you have a conversation with him on why? He spoke to my supervisor about that. What was the message relayed? I'm not willing to discuss this one. Regardless of reason, refusing the test was Tony's right. And with no evidence that a crime had even taken place, the family shifts its focus from pointing fingers to finding Stacy. We hired a private search team. Um, within the week, we had four public searches as well as numerous um, private searches, starting from the residents and um, you know expanding out from there. We're at Lewiston Lake, which is a long, thin lake set in the Trinity Mountains. And the reason that this was the base for search efforts is because, as you can see over here, we have Pine Cove uh, Marina. And behind Pine Cove Marina is where Stacy Smart and her boyfriend live. 
With cadaver dogs in tow, the search began and at least 50 volunteers from the community showed up. But there was one notable absence. During the time the family was searching, was Tony Brand involved in that? No, not at all. He stopped by the first search for about three minutes, gave a flash drive with some pictures on it to Melissa, and then left and got new tires on his truck that day. But then Tony's stance was still that Stacy had just run off. And by most accounts, other than the polygraph, he did cooperate with the investigations, both police and private. We were given written permission by uh, Mr. Brand to go in and search the perimeter of and the outside of the property. The only area where both dogs independently indicated that they detected something was the back of an old shed that uh, uh, adjoins the property there. It indicates that the dogs are detecting probably blood or, or something else to do with that. However, one has to then take the step back and say, well, is that from this case or is that because somebody cut their hand on the shed? But it did give us an opportunity then to go ask the neighbor for permission to go back in on the other side of the open shed and search all around inside with the canines. And at that point, they didn't hit on anything. A dead end, then searchers centered their efforts around the lake. And for a second, it looked like they might have something. There had been carpet removed within the home after she went missing. And that carpeting has disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, there was, believe it or not, carpeting that washed up on the lake shore here. You're kidding me. Was it a like match? Like weeks later. Well, the sheriff's department finally came out and casually determined that it was not. Another false lead, but around that same time, search crews using sonar got what they believed to be their biggest hit yet. We pinged an object on the lake that looked to be human remains and they brought divers out two days later. It turns out we understand from divers from the sheriff's department that went in later that that was debris on the bottom. Not human remains for the family so desperately searching for answers, both relief and heartbreak. We adopted Stacy's youngest child. She came to us several times and said, I'm worried about my mom. She's up there something. I'm worried about my mom. If she's out there somewhere, she's probably freezing to death. Police looked into the possibility Stacy really did simply walk off and even investigated a possible link between Stacy's disappearance and that of Sherry Papini's kidnapping, which happened just 45 miles away. We've been in contact with the Shasta County Sheriff's Office and they've been in contact with us and neither of us have been able to drum up anything that would make it look like they were connected in any way. And on top of that, even though she was reported missing on the second, the same day as Sherry Papini, she had not actually been seen since October 15th. Do you still feel that she is alive and somewhere out there? I, um, I know that my mother would never leave her family without contacting us. Um, I think that maybe an accident happened um, and whoever, there has to be somebody that knows something about her disappearance. And as it turns out, there was someone who claimed to know something, something the family thinks could change everything. They've searched the home she shared with her boyfriend. They've searched the lake near their house. But when it comes to finding Northern California mother of four, Stacy Smart, every search has been a dead end. And if you ask Stacy's family, her boyfriend Tony may know more than he's letting on. You don't have a girlfriend living with you, a boyfriend living with you, and just wake up one day and say, oh, I don't know where they're at. Really? <laughs> It doesn't work like that. Then, after weeks of unsuccessful search efforts, Stacy's family gets a visit from someone claiming to know more, reportedly one of Tony Brand's own friends. There was a woman that came to our house that said he had told her he'd put her somewhere. I, I, I can't go into specifics, but we had her call our private detective. He taped the whole conversation, gave it to the police department. They interviewed her several times. A shocking allegation that Tony's lawyer told Crime Watch Daily had no merit, but Deputy Sheriff Joshua Ford confirms they are investigating it. Do you find that valid? I have spoken to that individual on two separate occasions. Um, 
and that is some information that the sheriff's office has been looking into. It very well could be a very important piece of circumstantial evidence to this particular case. You know, I can't really discuss too much about it. But there was someone else we hoped would be willing to discuss. The man standing right in the middle of the mystery, Tony Brand himself. Oh, hi. Is Tony Brand's residence here? No, it's not his residence, but he is here. Oh, I'm with Crime Watch Daily. Melissa, I would love to speak with him for a few minutes about Stacy. He said he'd like you to talk to his lawyer. Here's the thing. I want to just talk to him and get his side of the story, his version, because I sat down with the family, mm -hmm. and obviously you know how they feel. Yeah. We want to hear from him. Right, right. Anything he wants can, to say. Can you just come in, you by yourself, for a moment? Though we weren't allowed to record inside, I met Tony face to face, and surprisingly, he told me the only reason he wouldn't talk to us on camera was because his lawyer advised against it. So I got the attorney on the phone to make our case for equal time. But once again, he declined. That's when Tony walked me out of the front door. I suggest you turn the camera off. And with that, our brief meeting was over. Tony was very respectful. He let us inside. He talked to us for quite a while. I spoke with his attorney on the phone. When it comes down to it, they just want to do this in a written statement. His attorney said that he is grieving along with the family. So now we're just going to leave the property and be respectful and wait for that statement. And not long after that, the attorney did give Crime Watch Daily the following. Tony was in a loving, intimate relationship with Stacy, which ended with as much mystery to him as anyone else. He has cooperated fully with the investigators in this case and is as afraid for Stacy as any of her other loved ones. Is Tony Brand a person of interest? At this particular point, with the information that we have, nobody's been cleared, so everybody's a person of interest. But naturally, being the last person that we have confirmed to have seen her, you know, we're obviously looking into that angle as well. Besides the polygraph, is he cooperating? Besides the polygraph, he's, he's cooperated. He allowed us into his house on multiple occasions prior to us even going there with a search warrant. He's been cooperative up until that point of the polygraph. And again, at this point, Deputy Sheriff Ford tells us authorities aren't even completely sure what kind of case they have. Do you think there's foul play involved with her disappearance? To be honest with you, I can't rule it out, and I can't say that it happened for sure with the information that we have at hand. So we're looking at all possible angles. Is there any evidence that is helping point in any certain direction? There is actually some circumstantial evidence that the sheriff's office has drummed up. We're working on several different theories in, in regards to that information, but I'm not at liberty to discuss that either. Are you hopeful that an arrest will come? I'm hopeful that either we find Miss Smart safe and happy and you know, with a reasonable explanation for why she disappeared, and if that's not the case, I'm, I'm anticipating an arrest. But for now, when the Smart family gathers around the table, the conversation will always circle back to the same sad topic. What's the most difficult during this process? Not having answers, um, just the feeling of my mother being lost. We need answers. Somebody has to know something. The something. not knowing is cruel. It's cruel. It's the worst. And what goes through your mind when you think about her? Fears of what happened to her. Where is she at? What's the family want most of all? Closure. However it may come. Yeah, however it may come. Once again, here are some images of Stacy Smart. She's 52 years old with blue eyes and blonde hair, five foot eight inches tall and approximately 180 pounds. If you know any information about where she might be, call the NorCal Alliance for the Missing Anonymous tip line at 530-378-4491.